everybody all right we're working on this bed and I'm cracking myself up because I might have placed too many restrictions on this project it could either be a great success or it could be a complete failure but let me show you what I got at the moment here's the frame so I've used this, the sides are uh, one by fours. These are just some ripped down two by fours, like half of a two by four, basically a two by two that I had just laying around just to kind of help support the corner. And those are glued and screwed. This whole thing has been glued and screwed together so far. Using the uh, one by fours for legs. And I've had to it's been kind of time consuming to design this to fit exactly where I have it. So I've had to come up with different lengths by a quarter inch on these legs in order to meet the floor and still have it be level across the top. And as you can see I've got overhang over the foot uh, footboard area of the vehicle. I may end up having to come down with a support on the end, but I'm not sure yet. And uh, so the restrictions that are really bogging me down or creating, you know, some issues. One is I'm trying to make this as light as possible. I could just build this out of two by fours and have it be strong and go together fairly simple but I'm trying to do it lightweight and as cheaply as possible. I'm using a bunch of scrap pieces of wood that I got laying around trying not to go make another trip to town and spend any more money on wood. However, the wood I'm using is pretty darn cheap. It's just the lowest grade boards you can find. They're not finished wood or anything like that. Just cheap pine. Anyway, but that's what's making it kind of interesting and fun. So I'm going to start working on the slats. And I'm going to be using uh, some of this leftover 1x4, probably for the ends, maybe across the center. And we'll see where else I use it, because I'm not sure if I have enough of the, uh, the furring strips. To do everything I need it's going to be a lot of pieces of furring strip to cover this span and hopefully have not too too big of gaps between the strips to where the foam squishes down through it so that's another one of the challenges instead of just using like a plywood board across the top plywood's pretty darn heavy it'd be real easy to just screw a piece of plywood to the top of this and be done with it but <clears throat> I don't know how I would, well, I guess I could make another frame and then two pieces of plywood. But anyway, that's just too much weight. I'm trying to get away from that. And that's why I don't have plywood floor on here as well. I'm just using the bottom of the van and this plastic bed cover. But anyway, let me get to it. Start hooking a whole bunch of boards together and see what happens these furring strips really lightweight and dirt cheap that's why I'm using them but they may not be strong enough to do what I need them to do problem is I'm not going to know that until I get it finished so I'm going to start working on that and I wanted to glue them across the top of the frame you know, a drop of glue on this side with a screw and a drop of glue on the other side with a screw. I'll glue the end pieces in because they're permanent. But since I don't know if those furring strips are going to work or not, I'm just going to screw them and screw them 
instead of uh, adding glue to it in case I have to take it apart and make some modifications so it'll be interesting to see how it works out I'll get back with you when I get some progress made on on putting these boards across the top we'll see what happens here's a couple things that I'm learning as I'm going through this process so I'm using about a three sixteenth inch shim just what I had laying around piece of that laminate board for underlayment stuff I put that between the one that's solidly mounted and then I have another board that's going to be the one that slides in and out that one's just sitting in there for spacing and then the board that I'm mounting goes up tight against that so the gap will be half the width of this on both sides of that center board so it has room to slide back and forth so I think that's pretty important and then when I drill the hole <clears throat> I'm drilling it with 1 8 inch bit <clears throat> I'm using an inch and a quarter length screws that are going down this is only three quarters of an inch wide this board that I'm screwing it into and same with this one so I don't have a lot of a lot of wood to work with here and then what's been happening is I'm getting a split on a couple of these boards and I am gluing them down this one is re it's going to be a slider but uh, I'm gluing them down just because of that split and then what I started doing is to taking a quarter inch bit and just ream that out because I don't have a counter sick counter sink bit so I'm just buzzing that down a quarter of an inch or so deep to make room for the for this bevel on the screw and that's what's splitting it as it pushed that down into the wood it splits it so with that pre-drilled so far that's fixing the problem with the split and then the glue is just going to ensure it stays put I wasn't going to glue it but I changed my mind so anyway that's what I'm working on that's what it looks like so far and I got a long way to go it's kind of slow and time consuming but we'll see I think that gaps going to be fine between the boards I don't think it's going to be a problem I think if anything it'll be a benefit because of the the cushion can breathe all right back to work Well, that's where I'm at so far. Looks pretty nice. I uh, originally was thinking I was going to put a wider board here, and same with the other end. But I may just go with the standard inch and a half. It's actually called a one by two, but I think it's only an inch and a half. Um, maybe maybe even not quite that I, I can't remember anyway it's uh it's very strong and solid feeling and I took it out of there and weighed it and it's coming in what I've got done so far is 22 pounds which is pleasing because the uh, unit that I took out of here was 60 my previous build that platform with the box so it's considerable savings in weight I don't think I will have 
I may have another 10 pounds in the other section because there's a lot less wood about the same number of slats but basically just one board with a couple legs on it to bring it out to this side and then this part of the frame supports the center section for both for the slide out part and this part here so um, yeah I mean it's an awful lot of work but the goal at this point looks like it's achievable a lightweight setup to pull this out and fit two well double 48 inch wide mattress and then fold it up and be able to make a couch out of it so so far so good we'll see it's not done yet I still got a kind of the complicated part yet to come putting the other slots together I've got a few ideas about how I'm gonna make that happen and hopefully it'll work but I'll show you that as I go about it I gotta go back to the store pick up some more wood this took about twice as many furring strips as I had expected that it would but the beauty is they're only a buck and a half a piece for an eight foot length uh, furring strip so I need about seven more so 10 or 12 bucks 10 to 15 bucks more that'll bring it to a total of about forty dollars worth of materials to uh, put this bed together anyway so far so good I'll come back on here once I get going on this tomorrow and show you what that other piece looks like and how I'm gonna put that together I'm gonna get cleaned up and get a shower and probably head to town and pick up those uh, other seven strips of wood so that I can get started tomorrow morning when it's nice and cool that's what I say let's see if that's what I do hope you all doing well out there guys we'll see you on the next one